Hello everybody, this is Tekka. What we're going to be doing in this video is talking about freedom, specifically the Free Software Foundation, who they are, and do a quick rundown of the list of distributions that actually follow the principles of FOSS. This list is shorter than you might think and we're going to be missing many familiar faces we've come to know and have some very civil discussions about. So jumping right in, the Free Software Foundation is a nonprofit that fights to promote digital rights and free software. And free as in freedom, by the way. The Free Software Foundation is the main sponsor of the GNU project, which makes most of the core utilities that a overwhelming amount of Linux distributions use. Many basic commands you might use like chmod for managing permissions, mkdir for making directories, and even bare basic commands like ls, ln, print working directory, cp are all GNU core utilities. They also publish all the GNU licenses including the GPL, LGPL, AGPL, and the FDL. And they command to promote free software against things that violate user freedoms, such as DRM, software patents, and treacherous computing. So it's no surprise that they don't really endorse a majority of Linux distributions, and uh, some for really silly reasons in my opinion, but there are distros that make sense not to be endorsed. For example, distributions that shift proprietary or non-free applications out of the box, or even those weird distros that ship Google Chrome as the default web browser. Example, Ubuntu, probably if not the most popular Linux distribution, uh, isn't endorsed for uh, a number of reasons. It could either be the Amazon links they used to push on the actual desktop, the proprietary Snap store that they've been pushing as of recently. But even with that, the main reasons that they do not endorse Ubuntu is because of its software patents and just confusing language within its software licensing. Any distro that has any non-free apps, even in the main repository, is not going to be endorsed. So that takes away Linux Mint and even Arch Linux, for example. So what about a distro that has a main repository with only free software? but an additional repository that has non-free software. Nope, so that crosses out both Debian and OpenSUSE from the list. Even Fedora isn't gonna be endorsed despite having unrelated separate community repositories for non-free software because its repos allows non-free hardware firmware, which is a, a red line, supposedly. How about just any distro that's using the stock Linux kernel? Again, nope, that's not allowed because it contains non-free firmware blobs, so that even takes out something like Tails. The point is the Free Software Foundation is very strict with what they recommend, so it is interesting to see what they actually give the green light to. To be Free Software Foundation endorsed, the distribution has to be the complete package unless it's an embedded system. It must be entirely free software down to the kernel and firmware levels, and you can't steer users to installing non-free software. Additionally, you must commit to fixing any issues, uh, have no name confusions, uh, don't use any confusing terms, and more. These are very strict, so let's go through a quick overview of the distros that did make the cut. So first we're going to be starting off with Drygora Lit- oh, I'm sorry. Dry, Drygora GNU slash Linux dash Libre. This is quote, a complete and reliable distribution that is made entirely of free software, founded on the concepts of simplicity and elegance. And usable for almost any purpose. Well, in my experience, it's not. No matter what I did to try to get it to run, it wouldn't, and firing it up in something like a virtual box and even GNOME boxes just did not work. Um, with that, it does use run it as a init system and QI as its package manager, which is actually custom for that distribution. And at no surprise, it uses the Linux Libre kernel. For me, I'm gonna have to pass on this one. Next up is Dynabolic. This distribution is designed specifically for audio and video production, and it's made to be run off of a live CD and just not to update. And because of this, the Free Software Foundation recommends you not connecting to the internet while using this Linux distribution. The latest release is from 2011, so the website actually hosting the ISO image for the little upload date says 
about a decade ago. It's 32-bit only, and booting into it is a blast from the past. It's based off of Ubuntu 9.10, which means that it has an ancient Ubuntu theme built on top of GNOME 2. And I've never seen so many pre-installed applications on a Linux distribution, which really might be a good thing considering you're recommended not to download stuff. And this is so old, it's hard to recommend. I mean, last time this was updated, I was uploading Minecraft server videos to this channel. So if you don't care about some proprietary firmware blobs, you should probably use something like a Ubuntu Studio or another production geared distro that has everything you need, if that's even something you're looking for. Now, for the first distribution that I actually might recommend you go ahead and check out, that is going to be Geeks. This is a Linux distribution actually developed by the GNU project with its very own init system and package manager. This distro has a declarative operating system configuration, which makes it very similar to distributions like uh, Fedora Silverblue or even Nix OS. This makes it so you can build the entire system from a configuration file. This also comes with a TUI installer similar to a lot of those Arch installation scripts and going through the installer, you can actually pick what desktop environment you want to install, except for Plasma for some reason. And this does have two different versions, a stable version and a latest version. And the stable version has some pretty old packages. I'm not talking like older than Debian packages. It ships with GNOME 3.34 and the latest version, which is newer, but still not like bleeding edge, ships with GNOME 40. So at least that's better than... 3.34. It's mainly known for its package manager, which allows you to do things like rollbacks, installing applications without being root, and many more features. This is a very unique distribution. Even the short overview doesn't do it full service. So if you're even remotely interested in checking it out, I I would recommend you do so. Now the next two distributions are very similar, so I'm gonna go ahead and group them into one. We have Hyperbola and Parabola. Sounds like I'm gonna catch something just reading this. Parabola is basically Arch without any of the non-free software as it also uses the Linux Libre kernel instead of the stock kernel and the overall installation process is very similar to Arch Linux. It supports OpenRC alongside Systemd and it still has 32-bit support, which Arch actually officially dropped and that's basically it. <laughs> Hyperbola is another Arch-based system that holds back packages for the purposes of stability. This makes Hyperbola basically an LTS version of Parabola. For example, if we go to the packages page on the Hyperbola website, we can see it uses the LTS version of the Linux Libre kernel, and it still has GNOME 3.38 based GNOME applications. It also doesn't support systemd at all because it's not following their uh, social contract, and it also removed Java and uh, Dbus support for some reason. Overall, you should probably just use Arch over Parabola, Oh, just because more community support and much more packages available. And Hyperbola really just takes it too far, putting their philosophy over functionality. Next up, we have Pure OS, and this might be the very first distribution on this list that actually feels fully complete. It's based on Debian testing and gives us a very vanilla GNOME experience, even it, though it is a little outdated because it's using a GNOME 3.38. Notably, this distro is funded by Purism and supports the, the Librem 5 Linux Linux smartphone. So there's going to be a few uh, mobile specific features here. Pure OS doesn't use the Linux Libre kernel and it actually uses the stock kernel, but they go through and remove the proprietary blobs that can be found there. And it does also have some kind of weird defaults such as uh, the GNOME web being the default web browser, but overall it is a really polished Linux distribution and doesn't feel like some hacky Debian spin. Pure OS is probably the first distro on this list that's actually uh, recommendable for day-to-day -day usage. Now, while we're talking about PureOS, the uh, welcome screen actually allows you to add Nextcloud for easy account and open source cloud syncing. And if you're interested in starting your very own Nextcloud instance, you could actually use the sponsor of today's video, Linode. Linode is a fantastic cloud computing provider. Uh, granted, they are gonna have a list of distributions you probably actually want to uh, use as a uh, Linux server. <laughs> you have a bunch to select from a bunch of different regions to pick a server that's closest to you, and a whole load of one-click installers to easily get websites, game servers, or Nextcloud instances spun up with ease. And actually, I'd almost recommend using the Docker image of Nextcloud. It's newer and it works very well. I did a whole separate dedicated video on that going over how to get it set up on Linode. So I will be linking down below to that video as well 
as a link to get a $100 60-day credit to go ahead and try out Linode today. So with that, next up is Triskel. This is an Ubuntu-based distribution, and if you're running Ubuntu, you're going to be very familiar here. The latest 10.0 release is actually based on Ubuntu 20.04, so it's going to be about two years behind. But that little flaw aside, it's it's a pretty solid distribution. By default, it uses a Mate, giving us a very impressive 750 megabytes of resource consumption on boot. And this distro has additions running Plasma, LXDE, and Sugar. It does have a modified version of Firefox called A Browser, which has an add-on store that only uses free software, adds fingerprint resistance, and disables location sharing, and does things we all want to do, such as removing Pocket. Overall, this is cool, but again, not really unique enough if you don't really care about non-free software. Basically, to use any of the distributions on this list, you really have to care about the principles of FOSS. Now, for the last desktop distribution that we're going to be covering is Utoto. I think. This is the very first Linux distribution that the Free Software Foundation certified, and it was based on Gentoo until 2017, when they went ahead and switched to a Ubuntu base. Now, this distro was harder to unpack and learn about. The entire website is in Spanish, and the translated versions have a whole bunch of dead links. And what I can tell you for sure is like some of the other stuff on this list, I was not able to get this up and running either on VirtualBox, GNOME boxes, or even actual hardware. And I mean, the latest video that I can find on this system on YouTube is from uh, 2013. And I mean, if you're interested in checking it out, it is a pretty good video. It, this, this whole system, at least then, was basically a Mac OS kind of clone built on free software. A very old looking Mac OS to say the least. And digging around this website, it seemed like the primary purpose for developing this was to be one of the first endorsed free distributions. And it does seem to kind of tie closely to other projects from the same people that have to do with like the Argentinian voting system. So that's just gonna have to be a, a rabbit hole that I uh, don't dive into for now. So finally, let's go ahead and quickly cover some embedded systems. Libre CMC is a fully free and embedded operating system designed for routers and single board computers. This one uses the Linux Libre kernel and the OPKG package manager. Protein OS is another embedded distribution which uses the ProKit package manager and it allows packages to be built at runtime for different hardware use cases. And finally, the very last operating system I'm going to be talking about in this video is a uh, actually a non-GNU Linux distribution and this is Replicant. This is a fully free version of Android that replaces all the non-free libraries and applications with free software. This is only fully maintained and supported with ancient phones such as the uh, Samsung Galaxy S2 or S3 and the Galaxy Nexus. So if you have a uh, modern hardware and you want something that's fully de-googled, I'd recommend something like a uh, Lineage OS or even something like IOTA OS or forward slash E slash OS. Overall, free software foundation distribution recommendations uh, vary wildly in the overall quality, as several of them are unmaintained, a couple of them won't even boot, and many of them are just base operating systems with the non-free components completely removed. Which, this makes it kind of difficult to use any of these distributions on most hardware, unless if you want to do a lot of work and a lot of tinkering, to get some of your components, particularly Wi-Fi or printers, to work. The only two distributions here that I would personally recommend or even be worth checking out is going to be Pure OS or GNU slash Geeks. Anything else on this list at that point is basically just to flex on people who are running proprietary software. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.